Chair would recognize Karen Eckert from the Attorney General's office. We oppose uh, any amendments to the current um, penalties for marijuana possession. This legislature has already decided that there is a difference between possession and sale, and this bill is asking you to rethink that. Is, that, is there a difference? For the record, my name is Richard Van Wickles. I'm currently employed in the criminal justice system as the superintendent for the County Department of Corrections. Criminal justice policies of this kind have not eliminated the use of marijuana from America's college campuses or our society, and they never will. Some of our laws are needlessly harmful to good people of all ages, education levels, and backgrounds. Many of our societal laws are based on misinformation. The World Health Organization in 1998 released a study which states that there are good reasons for saying that the risks from cannabis would be unlikely to seriously compare to the public health risks of alcohol and tobacco even if as many people used cannabis as now drink alcohol or smoke tobacco. In my view, Laws against marijuana cannot be intelligently defended. All arguments that I have tried to make against marijuana use simply cannot be defended by credible facts as I learn more about the issue. If prison building is a national goal, then I guess that would be a good reason, I suppose, to leave our drug use laws as they are. To me, it is an outrage that an honor roll college athlete can lose his or her scholarship and a chance at the American dream because they tested positive for experimenting with a substance that the majority of Americans have tried. And the latest statistics suggest that 65% of the American population is accepting of Public servants and all American citizens should be friends of justice. I think it's fitting that I close with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. in that light. He said, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but in the silence of our friends. I am a friend of justice, and I invite you to be one as well. I respectfully suggest that the task of assigning an age limitation to the use of this substance comes only after you choose to legalize it. You're not choosing to legalize this. You're choosing to decriminalize it. To think that we can keep alcohol, drugs, out of the hands of children is naive. The point is, is that we are a government for the people, by the people. And we are persecuting our people. And we are doing it without good cause. I'm here to support this bill. My name is Carl Hedberg. Although cannabis has become inexorably woven into the fabric of our culture, our laws and attitudes continue to be driven by the bold and outlandish reef for madness fiction that was crafted to bring about prohibition. Prohibition has achieved a de facto legitimacy in large measure because of how long we've been waging this war, for over 70 years. It's time to adjust our laws and actions to reflect the reality that marijuana is here to stay. The fact that so many upstanding citizens across America can use cannabis completely undetected by their neighbors and colleagues clearly proves that the greatest risk they face is not from the plant, but from the unreasonably harsh laws they quietly choose to violate. Ian Bergoy? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm here to speak on behalf of New Hampshire Organized Crime. Uh, thanks to prohibition, drug dealers can sell products with quality control <coughs> ranging from satisfactory to downright dangerous. In many cases, we are able to defraud our customers, and our victims have no way to get justice. Allows our unnecessarily large network of middlemen and even our street dealers to make profits in the thousands of percents. If you eventually end prohibition and drugs end up in the hands of New Hampshire businessmen instead of criminals, quality and safety of product will increase and profits will drop to the low double digits. 
please don't listen to these crazy liberty people in here. Prohibition of the black market creates, provides tremendous profits for New Hampshire organized crime. For those of you voting no on this legislation, I would like to thank you. On behalf of all of New Hampshire's criminals, you're keeping us in business. The government's um, drug programming that they have in the schools there tells kids that a joint is the same thing as a, a hit of meth, uh, that a joint is the same thing as, as crack cocaine. And so inevitably, when a, a young person finds out that, well, they've been lied to about marijuana, they also presume they've been lied to about the other drugs. And so, yes, it certainly does make it easier for our dealers to fly them with, uh, with other narcotics. Thank you, and good luck in your business. <laughs> and I'm just wondering how you can talk so clearly with your tongue in your cheek. <laughs> Practice. The founding fathers of this state and of our nation lived during what historians <coughs> called the Age of Enlightenment. They believed, to put it as simply as possible, that reason was the primary basis for authority. Our ancestors rejected the notion that governments ruled by divine authority, and instead they insisted that a legitimate government required the consent of the governed. The New Hampshire Constitution does an outstanding job of articulating the principles that characterize such a government. Part 1, Article 18, illustrates one such principle, stating that all penalties ought to be proportioned to the nature of the offense. Unfortunately, the federal government's misguided effort to eliminate cannabis use has lost all sense of proportionality since Congress passed the Controlled Substances Act in 1970. The Schaefer Commission's report alludes to the same notion of proportionality that is written to the New Hampshire Constitution. It reads, The criminal law is too harsh a tool to apply to personal possession even in the effort to discourage use. It implies an overwhelming indictment of the behavior which we believe is not appropriate. The actual potential harm of use of the drug is not great enough to justify intrusion by criminal law to private behavior, a step which our society takes only with the greatest reluctance. We can and should continue to discourage the use of marijuana, but this can be done without defining the smoker as criminal. We've got a law in the books in New Hampshire that states that over 10% of our citizens are engaged in a criminal lifestyle, regardless of whether or not their marijuana use harms or endangers others. By contrast, the state itself sells alcohol in stores that line our roads. I hope you'll agree that individuals who use marijuana responsibly and privately would be more accurately labeled as violators, not criminals by the name of the It's time we stop giving these people criminal records and putting them through the system when doing so shows no benefit whatsoever to society. This truly is a bill which ought to pass. Why would you think that uh, the state of New Hampshire would want to go against federal law? Because the state of New Hampshire is sovereign, and the state of New Hampshire's first line should be to protecting its citizens and ruling and governing its state and not what the federal government wants to do. We're supposed to be 50 separate states that are united to defend the country, not united for California or for another state to tell us what we should do with our citizens. Uh, we have a Tenth Amendment to our federal to our national constitution saying that anything not set up expressly in the Constitution of the United States is purview of the individual states to decide. And while these laws may be on the books, there is some question to the constitutionality. My name is Jonathan Perry, and I'm here to speak in support of this bill uh, on behalf of Students for Sensible Drug Policy. A first-time marijuana offense for something as small as possession of one joint or a gram of marijuana will result in the denial of federal financial aid for any college student, um, and that's a punishment that is given to no other crime, including drunk driving, rape, or theft. I believe that if we are truly concerned with the well-being of young people, then we must reconsider the punishments for possession of marijuana. It's not the experimentation or the use of any of these substances that is so detrimental to a young person's advancement in life, it is a conviction of the use of these substances. It seems that these laws are trying to say that because drugs might ruin your life or might have a negative impact in your life, we're going to create laws that will. I began to think of marijuana prohibition as a test and it's as if I were to take the same test every year for 70 years and never pass. And the questions aren't getting harder, but the cost of tuition is going up. 